Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Welcome back you guys to video number two. We're really gonna deep dive now into what the heck is going on with the Invictus. Yes. Oh my goodness, we're debunking, we're debunking. Let's go. Now we're gonna be debunking a lot of the stuff Harry says as usual. So right off the bat, he says the media did not cover British soldiers being wounded in Afghanistan. He said he was angry at the media for doing that. He saw the true cost of war. He says all of this in the Heart of Invictus docu-series. He talks how he left Afghanistan after an American website broke the blackout on his deployment and how the curtain on his aircraft blew open and he saw wounded soldiers on the other side of the curtain and he was angry because the media wasn't talking about it. So with that, this journalist stepped up and said, I think he's forgetting about the cover story I did about uh, UK troops being injured and gassed. Afghanistan. <laughs> Boom. There you go. We're going to be doing a lot of debunking today. Then Harry came out. Here's his next one. Harry makes a fresh dig saying he had no support network after the war. Uh-huh. I mean, he basically said his family wasn't around. Nobody was around. Okay, so let's debunk. So to start with, there's a video that clearly shows the Queen meeting with Harry's walking with the wounded team before they went to Antarctica. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I'm just stupid. Isn't that showing support? These are people that were in Afghanistan. These are people that were wounded. And here's the Queen meeting them and showing support with Harry. What am I missing here? Recollections may vary. Then Talk TV had something to say about the whole poor me, I'm a victim thing. Listen to this. This constant bleating about no one was there to help me, mm. poor, poor me. I mean, no one in that entire world uh, was or is in a more privileged position mm. than him. No one could call for more help yeah. than someone like him. You know, the royal right. family, you know, if they get a headache, mm. uh, 56 doctors. Yeah. He does have this tendency to portray himself as, you know, the world's most mm. put upon victim. He does. And uh, I think that's, that's a bit the He, of all people, was in a position to get help. Yes, exactly. Right? Uh, and, and then to sort of complain that I just wasn't and I didn't get any help. Well, as I say, as a member of the royal family, all you've got to do is call for help. So mm. I broke my finger now. Yeah. Uh, there'll be three surgeons yes. there in three the minutes. The other thing I suppose that people will say is that, OK, it's one thing to unburden yourself to a therapist. It's one thing to unburden yourself to your family. But why does he have to unburden himself to Netflix? Yeah, because it makes a better movie, Ooh. that's why. And it's maybe it makes, uh, it makes a contract I mean, that you've already sell, signed. That, that, that will, uh, without wishing to sound too cynical, that will sell very well. Yes. You guys should also note that Harry's brother, William, apparently realized there was an issue and Harry credited William in 2017 to persuade him to seek therapy, which Harry did take. Now, we know years later, Harry tried to change the narrative and say it was all Megan, but that's actually not true. As usual, Harry forgets things. He was on a podcast with Byron Gordon in 2017, and he said that his friends and family looked at him and said, quote, look, you really need to deal with this. It's not normal to think that nothing affects you. And he went into therapy. I, I, it, he forgets things, but it was his brother. Oh my goodness. Now, also, an article came out about the blackout. You know, Harry was in Afghanistan for 10 weeks and nobody knew it because there was a UK blackout and it was the US media that broke the story. Well, in this story, it clearly says that two questions in, Prince William stood up, did a cutting motion with a hand across his throat and said, this interview is over. And the reason he did that was he was protecting Harry, who had still been in the same clothes that he'd been in for two days, was dusty, tired, and they were protecting him and wanted to get him out. Again, another debunk. Just an FYI, uh, there's another video where Harry says that he's really looking forward to seeing his family. Uh-huh. You know, the ones that aren't supporting him. Um... I'm longing to see my, my brother and sister-in-law um, as, as any other soldiers just come off the plane four and a half months away. Um, I really am longing to, to catch up with people um, behind closed doors. You guys aren't invited. <laughs> so 
Now Harry comes out. Now remember, this is all on Netflix. Uh, same crap, different day. I mean, we're just hearing the same story over and over and over and over. Nobody discussed my trauma. Nobody took care of me. And now he's saying that his tour of duty in Afghanistan, are you ready for this, guys? It triggered the trauma of losing Princess Diana. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know or you haven't heard it, this is Princess Diana's son, Harry, who walked behind her coffin, what, 26 years ago? But, I, I mean, I've just never seen somebody that that harps so much on his parent. I, I, I've just, I've never seen it. He'll, he cannot get past the death of his mother. He blames everybody. It's, it's unbelievable. He's still looking for sympathy from the loss of his mother 26 years later. Okay? They're bringing up the same footage. Here he is walking around, looking at the flowers. We've seen this footage. We saw it on the Netflix docuseries. We saw it on the Apple, the Me You Can't See. We've seen this. We've heard it over and over and over again. I, I mean, really. I totally agree with this statement. Harry is making Afghanistan an Invictus about Princess Diana. I think PR has told him this is the best way to get attention. And Netflix and Harry are using Diana as a commodity. And isn't that what killed her in the first place? Didn't Harry say, I see what happens when somebody I love is reduced to a commodity? But that's what he's doing to his mother's memory. You know, everybody is saying that Harry should be proud of the games, but because he keeps bringing up his mental health issues and his mother's death, he's managed to make the whole thing about him and the Invictus Games competitors, instead of taking center stage, are put in the rear seat. We've all read about it in Spare. We've heard about it in previous interviews. It's time to put a sock in it. Now, Harry then starts making comments about the uniforms and he's giving advice to former service personnel, which I don't think he has the right to be giving advice to anybody, in my opinion. But he makes a, he makes a dig about the uniform. You did it. And the service runs in your blood that never leaves the body, even if you're not wearing the uniform. And of course, we know he made that comment because he was banned from wearing his honorary military uniform. Listen, if he wants to wear his khakis, go ahead. But no, he wants the honorary titles. That's what was stripped from him. And he can't wear it anymore. So anyway, he drops the F-bomb. He's got a foul mouth. You know, yeah, he's no Prince Charming. Now here's the part that I just find so hypocritical. Here we've gone through episodes of this show and he has slammed on his family, claimed he's had no support. Basically, he was just left in the dust. He took swipes at, his, at everything. And then he comes out and says, we need to put the past behind and focus on the future. Are you kidding? You can't even put the past behind you. How do you expect other people who really we're out there fighting. We're not talking about people who have their own personal protection group and who sat in the bunker. I mean, how do you expect them to put it behind them if you can't even put it behind you? So now people are upset because they said the spotlight is on him, not on the athletes, and he's absolutely ruining the Invictus Games, and I have to completely agree. It's all about Harry. It's all about Megan. It's all about Harry's trauma. What happened to Harry when he came back from Afghanistan? How it triggered the memories of his mother? It's all about him, not the people that are the athletes that are the ones that should be the stars of this. He's absolutely ruining the Invictus Games. Absolutely. Now, I told you guys the other day that Angela Levin said that she's actually spoken to some of the people at the Invictus Games and that many people are against the two of them speaking at the event because they're using the platform for publicity for themselves. Like, we didn't already know that? I mean, come on. Let me just say that it's starting to affect the Invictus games in ways that you wouldn't think. But okay, one of the ways it's affecting them, we know, is monetary wise. Because now the Invictus games are putting up things like this. If you would like to support the work that we're doing, please click the link below and donate. I happen to know a lot of people that are not going to donate simply because Harry and Meghan are involved. They're making money off Invictus Games and nobody can be for sure that the money that they're donating is going to Invictus and not to Harry and Meghan. 
Now, you guys should also know that, you know, in the Netflix series, Harry's talking about, oh, you know, I came up for this idea while I was in Afghanistan. Well, of course, these articles clearly show that's not true. He was on a radio show. Once again, he forgets. He opens his mouth and he forgets he was on a radio show. And he clearly says on the radio show years and years ago that the Americans had the Warrior Games. He went to watch. He stole the idea. And he came home with it. And with the help of the Ministry of Defense and the Royal Foundation from William and Catherine, they were able to put the Invictus Games together. That's right. Now, one more bit of information. I'm sure a lot of Germans aren't going to be happy with this because their taxes flew Harry and Meghan back and forth in September on a private jet. That's right. It was taxpayer-funded flights. Uh, the taxpayers paid for the, the whole thing. So um, I'll be interested to see if the Germans are paying for their flights again. That's right. Ugh. All right, you guys, they did a poll. Who's watching Heart of Invictus? The poll didn't go over well. I have a feeling it's not going to be as big as Harry and Meghan would like it to be. And I agree with this Twitter user. I, you have somebody so privileged who's so persistent to tell everybody he's a victim. Okay? Nobody can relate to this guy. I agree. And the fact that he is using the Invictus games to slag off on his family again... This should not be allowed. I'm really surprised that the organizers from Invictus haven't put their foot down at this point. Let me tell you something. If I had the money to donate, it would not be going to any charity that this man was involved in. And, you know, I got to be honest, you guys. He's not hurting the royal family at this point. He's hurting himself. But I just don't think he sees it. Like, seriously, he doesn't see it. It's, it's so sad. All right. Put those comments below. Make them good. You know what I'm looking for, okay? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget about my merchandise that I've got. I'm going to be adding more to the store soon. Don't forget to go into the description box. You'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my physical address. For those of you who've donated to my coffee funder through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.